All right, so this tutorial seeks to explore the different ways you can use Illustrator to generate different versions of your logos, incorporating all of the different design elements. So I'm going to, get to go through each element one by one and show you how we can start creating variations and developments of logos, specifically targeting certain design elements. So what I've done here is I've put together a bit of a, uh, a bit of a logo, which is a very basic logo of, uh, of my uh, new burger company, which we'll call Fit Burger. Uh, it's healthy vegetarian burgers. And of course, we've got the, uh, the typical burger here. Uh, in order to produce this, I, um, I've just Googled what a burger looks like. And then just by eye, I've put together this, this very rough outline of, of a burger just as a, as a foundation. So color is the most obvious and easiest one to start with because uh, generally, particularly with Illustrator, all you're doing is just incorporating this little checkbox here to your different shapes. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get started. Let's, let's of course click on the bun. And the most basic thing you can do is just start clicking on the different shapes and start adding color. So there's a few different things that we can do here. Obviously, this is a slightly lighter beige color than, than what we've got on top. I prefer this one. So what I can do is I can select this and then I hit the eye button, which is eyedropper. And then I can just click on that and it will make them the same color. So that's the eyedropper tool. You're going to be using that a bit if you want to start really working with colors. And then of course, we'll, let's go through and we'll, uh, We'll add a few of the other colors as well. So one of the things you will have noticed I did then is I'm removing the outline first. So which is, if you click on that, see how they overlay? So we can go click on the outline, which is the line that surrounds it. And then you just click this little red dash here, which says none. And that removes the outline. And then you're free to just change the color. So this of course is going to be my tomato. I'm going to eyedropper that by hitting the eye button there. And I've got my cheese here. All purely uh, vegetarian cheese, of course. And then we've got our little, uh, little patty here. And then we've got onions. So one thing that you can do is let's go back and refer to our, uh, our burger here. Now let's select Let's find a burger with some onion on it. So what we can do is we can just copy and paste that. Now, because all I'm doing this for is to steal the colors from it, I don't necessarily need to acknowledge the artist because all I'm doing is I'm just gonna be putting this burger over here. I'm gonna click on my onions and then I'm gonna eyedropper or hit the eye button. I'm just gonna press roughly where the onions are located. So I've just used the eyedropper and clicked on the onion there. And what that's done is it just, it's pulled in that purple color for the onions. So that's, that's generally how we would use color. And then of course we can, uh, let's modify the Fit Burger to, to be that sort of onion purple. Uh, that, now one of the things you're gonna run into of course is yellow and white. Very, very hard to read unless the text is really big. So keep that in mind, always keep that in mind because you're going to get judged quite harshly if the text is not legible. So for the purpose of that, let's make that, uh, let's make that, that color also. All right, so what I've landed with there is the most literal possible interpretation of, uh, of using colors. You've, you've used exactly the colors of the image that you were trying to depict, which is a perfectly fine way to go. However, specifically in a branding process, Firstly, you're going to want to experiment with all of the different colors. And also, generally speaking, if you were to be producing this as a brand or a logo, you're going to want to start creating a small color palette so that you can replicate that color palette in different variations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna control, grab all of these items, shrink them down and put them, pull them over here. And then I hit the Alt button and I'm going to duplicate. So what that allows me to do is it gives me a second version of this burger. 
So this is a great tool for developing your folio. All of a sudden you've got these two versions you can work with. Now what I'm going to do for this second version is as simple as let's create a purple version of the burger. So that's this is what would be known as a monotone logo. So there are things that you're going to need to do here. If we zoom into this burger, you'll be able you'll see that it's caused the cheese to kind of disappear and the lettuce a little bit. So what we can do there is when we've made it this monotone colour, that's when we start looking at adding a stroke in. So what that does is it gives that definition to the shapes, even though they've all kind of been melded in together. So that would be a second option. And it's as simple as that, that you can say that you've experimented with a realistic colour palette and then you've got a monotone colour palette. And then from there, what you could do is you could start saying, well, let's have a, let's have three different colors for the color palette. Let's choose a darker purple for this, uh, for some of the items. I'm just going to eyedropper that. So that's just starting to feed in some slightly more detail, just so it's not, it, monotone logos can be a little bit bland. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to pick another color. So this is choosing a complementary colour. So what that's going to do is it's going to start feeding in a couple of different options. So now all of a sudden we've got a triple colour palette. So we've got our purple, we've got our dark purple and we've got our, our yellow. And I'm just going to eyedropper that. So that's starting to show just an alternate way to do it. And you would discuss that. You would say, this is a, a, a three color palette and you would start talking about those things. So it's, it's as simple as creating just a few different color palettes. What you could talk about there is that this yellow is getting missed a bit. So you could talk about how you might want to fix that up if you wanted to move down that path. Now, the very final thing that we're going to talk about here is let's incorporate some some really, really different colors. So what you would do here is you've, you've covered off a few different items and now you want to throw in an absolute, completely different, different way to, uh, to approach it. So let's, let's really whack in some funky colors here. So what that does is it just shows that you're exploring as many different options as possible. And you can talk about why you chose or didn't choose these colors and So what you're producing here is this really sort of psychedelic type uh, type environment. So very 90s. Let's get some some really sort of vivid yellow in there. And all of a sudden you've you've got this completely new color palette. And what you could do is you could talk about this in your annotations. You'd say, oh, these are this is uh, this is sort of replicating that real sort of 90s era, which is uh, interestingly there. <laughs> Back when I was interested in fashion was was the 90s and um, so here you go, you've got four different variations of how you could use colour. And that was done so quickly and easily, you just duplicate, modify the colours, and then of course you just start going to your annotations, you print them out and you stick them in your, your folio, and that's your colours fairly well done. You've, you can show that you've explored all of these different colours, and you can start to justify why you may want to go down a certain path with your colour choices, because you can clearly show that you've experimented with a few different options. All right, so the next thing I'm going to be looking at is form, uh, how you can easily implement form using Illustrator's uh, preset tools. Now, obviously with form, uh, particularly if you're going to be drawing this, uh, you would be, um, you would, in order to address the form design element, you'd probably just be redrawing this to be a more three-dimensional looking burger at the moment. It's very much a two-dimensional burger. However, to use the Illustrator specific presets, uh, there's a couple of different things that we can do very easily, specifically in Illustrator, to create some form options. So the first thing we can do is, I'm just gonna select this whole burger, and I'm gonna hit Control G to group it. So now it's, now the burger's as a group. Now I can just go into 3D, and extrude and bevel. So what that's done is if we look at that, see how it's tilted it a little bit and we should be able to see that it's put a bit of a, uh, a bit of a bevel or a bit of an extrusion on that. 
So let's increase this extrusion depth to 150. So that's uh, probably not even enough. Let's make it 200. And if we put say wireframe shading, you can sort of see what this form has done. So it's just, it's turned it into a 3D object. So that's one of the first things that you can do with form. So it's a little bit rough, rough around the edges in terms of what we've achieved there, but you've created this kind of form shape. And what I can do is I'll, I can direct select these things. And instead of making it black, see if I change that to a gray, you'll start seeing these shadows appearing. So the form becomes more prominent once you start feeding these colors in. So if we change that to the color of a bun, for instance, now it's starting to look like a um, sort of a, a video game bun now. So let's let's do the cheese. Now I'm doing this a little bit backwards. I probably should have fed these colours in before, but uh, you can sort of see the mistake there because what it's done is I can't really see what I'm what I'm working with as easily. make that the purple there. So that's one of the most obvious things you can do with form. Uh, let's just change the letters. So that's just a couple of minutes and what you can do is you can say look I've, I've created a three-dimensional type element um, and you'd be able to annotate that and talk about how form has affected the design and, and start sort of providing some feedback even if of course you don't follow along with that form theme. You're just illustrating you understand how form works and how it can change your logo. So the other thing that I'm going to show you, and I'm just going to back uh, control Z all of that, get that back to the way it was, is I can create form through tone as well. So if we change that to the color of the bun, I'm going to use my gradient mesh. Now I'll go into detail in other videos about how to use the gradient mesh tool. Feel free to click on them. Uh, and I'm just going to create that little gradient there and I'm going to make that a lighter color. So see how that's kind of, it's, it's like adding a gradient, but it's creating form by creating lighting effects through the tone. So that's one thing you can create that really nice sort of rounded sort of tone look. And another thing I can do is I can start playing with the gradient tool as well to do that. Now again, similar with the gradient, Similar with the uh, gradient mesh, I've, I've kind of run through how to use the gradient tool in other videos. So we're going to try to make that the purple of the onion. So this is creating the illusion of three dimensions because it's, um, it's just simply using colors and tones which create that kind of three dimensional look. See how now these tomatoes look a bit rounded. I'll do the same with the cheese. The cheese, of course, will be, the gradient will go in the other direction because the cheese is rounded downwards. So I'm going to hit the G button and see how if I zoom in there, you've got this darker, then it comes lighter as it gets more exposed to what would be the sunlight. With this one, this is the meat patty. I'll use a gradient mesh for this as well. Uh, not the meat patty, the vegetarian patty. I'll use the gradient mesh there and And again, you're just starting to create that form by adding tones and adding gradients into it. So that's another way that you would create form. And again, you would talk about that in the same way. How does this add? You would talk about how it might make it pop off the page a little bit. Let's just finish this off, finish this letters off. Now I'm gonna to try to do a gradient mesh on this, but because it's such a complex shape, I might run into issues. Surprisingly, that's actually kind of worked out freakishly well uh, because it's it's kind of given it that uh, sort of hodgepodge, uh, scrunched up sort of feel that lettuce lettuce kind of has about it. And then I would I would fatten these up a little bit just so they're a bit closer together because without those lines around, 
So you would do something like that, and that, that would be adding form in. And again, you would, you would discuss how this makes it pop off the page. The shortfalls are that all of a sudden it doesn't have that iconic logo look about it. So there's pros and cons, and you want to talk about how this use of the design element affects your design for better or for worse. Okay, so the next thing we're going to discuss is tone. So we've already shown in the form aspect of this tutorial how to create that three-dimensional look with tone. So we won't go over that again. What we're going to be talking about here is how we can use tone in different ways to create unique aesthetic effects. Generally speaking, when I'm talking about tone, within Illustrator, it's all largely done through the gradient tool. So what I'm going to do to start with is I first need to outline all of these strokes. So at the moment, see how that goes, uh, got a little question mark there, question mark there. That means that I can't change all of these black items uh, everywhere because some are strokes and some are fills. So if I go object, path, outline stroke, what that does is it changes them from strokes, see if I zoom in here, to shapes, which means that it's all now a fill, except for I would direct select, see that's, that's giving me that white now, so we need to keep that, and we could remove some of these, can't remove that one, so what I'll do there is then I would select all of the black elements here and hit that little gradient button. So what that's done is, let's just shift that up a bit, is it's still given us this abstract sort of uh, two-dimensional burger, but with this tone we fed in, it kind of creates like a cool different color scheme that's different to just using flat colors. And you could talk about this a lot in your annotations. So now what I can do now, it's all the same color. I can go select same fill color and it will automatically select everything that I've made this gradient. And then I hit this little gradient tool and I can make it all a uniform gradient like that. And then I deselect that. So you've got this really nice gradual change from this magenta color to this sort of deep lavender color. So that's one thing that I can do with tone. I can do the same with the text. However, before I do that, I would need to first change the text to outline. You can't add gradients to text that is not outlined. So I need to go type, create outlines or control shift O. And then I can click on my little gradient there. I can hit the gradient and I can do that. And have a bit of an experimentation with the radial gradients as well. That can sort of give you some cool effects. And these are all just really quick ways that you can say that you're experimenting with tone. And of course, we can just do a monochrome tone as well. If we go select same fill color, of course, we can, we'll change that to CMYK, hit the black, change this one to CMYK, hit the black and then maybe make that a gray. You can switch the gradients around doing that. And again, that's just sort of creating these gradient tones. I can also create, if I go select same fill color again, again, just changing that to be a radial tone as well. So these are just other cool ways that you can incorporate tone using Illustrator really easily. I'm going to be talking about is shape. Now, shape is an interesting one because I've already drawn the burger. So, uh, shy of swapping out some of the shapes, um, there's there's not a great deal I can do in terms of using Illustrator's effects. Shy of just redrawing some of the shapes. So, generally, the only thing I'm really going to be running through here is how I could possibly redraw some of these shapes to either be geometric or angular and also organic. So generally speaking, this lettuce represents a very organic shape. So we will talk about changing that. And this bun, of course, is a, is a uh, organic shape. So we would just basically swap them out for more geometric shapes. And that would be how you would 
talk about the, the different ways that you're experimenting with shape. So let's, for starters, we'll lighten this off just so we've got a bit of a guide. So we've lightened that off and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control 2. So what that does is it locks that so I can't select that anymore so it can't get in the way. Now I'm just going to draw over with kind of a, a rough angular sort of look. Now I'm going to eyedropper that to be black and I'm going to do a similar thing. I'll eyedropper this one to grey, I'll control 2 to lock that so it doesn't get in the way and I'm just going to draw kind of an angular eyedropper black that. So all of a sudden what I'm trying to achieve here is just to show that I'm experimenting with the different ways the different types of shape that can formulate a slightly different design. So if I control 2 that one and I'm just going to hit that there. So this is the majority of what you can do with shape. So what you basically discuss is you've used the pen tool to go from point to point and you haven't used any curves and it's created a more angular type design. So what I can do now is if I hit Control Alt 2, that unlocks everything that you've locked and then you just hit the delete button to get rid of it. And another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the lettuce to the front now because all of a sudden, because I've drawn this over the top, it's in front of the lettuce and we want the lettuce in front. So we'll go arrange, bring to front. And then of course I might want to Maybe just draw over a more sort of angular lettuce as well. I'll delete the, the one behind it. So this is this is roughly what you can achieve with, with your shape. So you can you can say that you've had a bit of an experimentation with using more angular and less organic type shapes, and then you, in your annotations you you would discuss how this affects the design. Does it make it look more rugged? Does it make it look more modern, uh, less realistic? Uh, some sort of abstraction you could talk about as well. So there's a few different ways you would talk about that in terms of how you've created a variation of your logo using the shape as a design element. Okay, so the next one that we're going to be looking at is texture, which is something that you can really easily do some rapid fire development of ideas in Illustrator with texture. So we're going to start by selecting our, our little veggie patty here and we'll go into window, swatches, and we'll move that out of the way and we'll click on our little ironically called a hamburger icon and we'll go open swatch library. I'm going to move that across so you can see a bit better. Open swatch library and you can go into patterns here. Generally you're going to want to stick with basic graphic textures because these ones they're a bit they're a bit crazy and they they can start looking a bit 90s. So if we go basic graphic textures that'll bring up a few different texture options and let's just click there So that's sort of given us this sort of uh, pointillist texture here. So we just sort of, and, and again, it's a case of just experimenting, seeing, seeing what's going to work, seeing what's going to look good. So for this one, let's let's go with that one, and then for our uh, our buns, let's do that one because that kind of looks like a, a flowery sort of finish. So we're just feeding in some textures more than anything. Now what you'll find is, and just continue to experiment with this, what you'll find is that some of these textures can often make it look indistinct because this is white on white. It's, you, you just don't have that distinction. So one way that you can address that is of course by adding an outline. But another way is if we say copy, uh, let's just copy the patties first. So go to control C and then control F and then go arrange, send to back. We can change this to be a 
color of a patty. Let's select, uh, let's select a patty color here. Now what that's done is now you've got these two layers. So you've got this one layer, which is the texture, one layer, which is the color and the texture sits over the color and has created a colored texture. And now we would do the same control F C F and then you can hit control shift and backward square bracket. And again, we'll just choose the color of a meat patty here. Yeah, that's probably a little bit dark. See now I can't actually select that color behind it because it always just tries to select this one for me. This is where I would hit control two to lock that texture layer in front, which means that I can play with this layer behind. So I'll make that a slightly lighter color. And all of a sudden you can see that texture is coming through there. So this is how you would incorporate texture. And in the same way, you would discuss how it affects the design. See F, send that one to back, make that red. And you would say that it sort of creates this textile feel uh, and it just adds a point of interest. And that's, that's the way that you would talk about how you've used texture within this illustrated design to modify and to explore different options with your logo. All right, so we'll move on to points now. Now there's a couple of really, really easy ways you can incorporate points because point repeated is essentially texture. So it's very much following along from what we did in texture just before is let's select this meat patty. I'll go again, window, swatches, and I'll select my, this time of course, I'm going to go patterns, basic graphics, dots, which is essentially point hit there and all of a sudden I've used point to create a texture and then I would use it say a lighter texture here I would make it a darker texture here so these are all point based textures So that's generally how I'd create that. And you would sort of talk about how this creates kind of this newsprint kind of feel like, um, like that real sort of um, what's called a, a color half tone uh, in, the, in the old print industry. That was what it would be referred to. Now some pretty cool things have happened here whereas these seeds are kind of removed from the point. And then a few other things that you can do is, let's go back from that. Uh, you can essentially just create your own point as well. So you can, let's just create some white dots. So now I'm just hitting, holding the Alt button and clicking and dragging. This sort of blurs the line between point and shape, but because there's lots of them all together, it sort of does kind of, you would probably talk about this as point so I'm going to be using point here to again, create the feel of it being a texture without actually using a texture itself. I'll create a smaller dot there. And again, I'm just clicking and dragging using the Alt button. And now what I can do is I want to select all of these and then just copy and paste that over and over again. So I'll delete that one. So what I'll do is I'll click and drag to select all of these. Now that's also selected my patty. So I'll hold shift and then click on the patty. And then that takes away that from the selection. And now I've got this. So if I hit control G now to group those all together, I've all of a sudden got this group and I can do that, that alt drag and drag these across as a group. So again, that's how I'm starting to incorporate point to create sort of this unique texture. And then I might want to say, pick up this one and rotate it 180 degrees, just so it's not that really obviously repeating texture, pushing that up there, just to kind of break up that. Sometimes when you repeat things, it looks really obvious that it's just repeating and it can be quite distracting. So that's another way that I might want to use, uh, use circles to address the design element of points. So keep experimenting with that because there's lots and lots you can do. 
in terms of incorporating point into your design and trying to really make it help make your artwork stand out. Now, the final one is type, which is probably the most obvious one that, uh, that Illustrator can assist you with uh, because it's literally using the type tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create four variations here. So I'll just shrink that down. I'll put that in the corner. Alt, drag, alt, drag, alt, drag. So now I'm just going to do, do quick four different variations of the type. These top two are going to be variations of what I can do with kerning and tracking and letting. So that's how you would talk about that, the different way that you can modify a typeface. Uh, and then the other ones, I'm just going to be using some different fonts and talking about them as well. So there's two different ways that you address type. It's not just using four different typefaces. It's how you treat those typefaces. So what you do to those typefaces to make them just look that little bit better, a little bit more customized. So the first one is, now obviously this is Fitburger. So Fitburger is uh, fit being the first word. So I'm going to hold control shift and backward square bracket to really tighten up fit there. I'm going to put a space there with a few spaces to space our burger. And I'm going to expand that. So what you can see there is I've squashed in fit. So this is all just doing kerning. So it's not tracking because I've done it with individual letters. Now I'll just tighten up that I there. Now, of course, that's created a bit of a, a, a unique uh, style because fit, of course, means um, tight, tightly squashed in as well as the health and fitness type of fit. So it's a bit of a play on words. We've squashed in fit. So fit can obviously refer to, to say, a clothing fit. And then burger, we've spaced that out. And then with this one, let's shrink down this tight. So I'm hitting control shift and then backward arrow which is to the right of the M and now I'm hitting control shift right square bracket and I'm expanding that out so what that's done is it's just sort of made this much lighter full width vegetarian burger so you talk about how you've changed the tracking here because you've changed all the distance between all of the letters and you've made it the full width of fit burger and it's it comes across as lighter now so you'd probably say that it's lower in the hierarchy in comparison to this one. So what we're going to do here is let's have a look at changing the letting. So this is the easiest thing in the world to do because these are two different types, which is literally just that. So we've just pushed that up. And again, all you do is just talk about how the letting has affected the design. So you've, you've squashed it in. It's a much more compact design because you've modified the letting. Now, of course, we can start experimenting with some different fonts. So in order to experiment with fonts, we can go into type character. And that, of course, gives us this window. And it's, it's as simple as just going through your different font libraries. Uh, as I've shown in the previous uh, tutorial that you might have seen, you can go into da font, DA font, and download your own fonts. Uh, a lot of the custom system fonts uh, you, if anybody's looking to assess your work, they're going to immediately see that you haven't really tried unique fonts. You've just used the regular system fonts that the system provides you. So you won't get as many marks for really exploring different font choices. So I recommend go find a font, download it and install it just so that you can show that you've experimented with different types. So this one's Fitburger. Uh, this is of course Coco Goose, which is a sort of a much wider and bolder font. This would definitely be a display typeface. Uh, and it's as simple as that. You would talk about how that has changed your design from this rather condensed font to a more expanded font. And then you might want to change this to a more expanded font as well. And you would shrink that down. And these are just simple things that you can do as well. So, now, generally, you can also right align your typeface by clicking this paragraph button and making these right aligned. Generally speaking, you might want to also pick up your burger then and make that right aligned. So this sort of gives you that 
that uh, I'm saying ride line, that this sort of gives you this left aligned logo. Uh, and of course you can do the very same thing with, with ride aligned as well. Uh, generally speaking, if you wanted to do this, I would recommend let's expand our canvas a little bit there. If you're going to do this, I would recommend. Now this is called a horizontal version of a logo. So generally logos have a vertical and a horizontal logo. And if you're doing a horizontal logo, generally speaking, you would want an either right or a left aligned font. So these two logos can be the same thing. You would have, say this is your vertical version, and this is your horizontal version. Most big companies have both a vertical and a horizontal version of their logo. All right, so the next one we're going to look at is how we can start doing some different variations using line as a design element. So how you can show that you're exploring different ways of using line as a design element. So as you can see here, we've already got line existing. So we've got some outlines around here. So we've, we've got a little bit of line incorporated already. So the first thing that you might want to do is let's have a look at creating a grungy line. So we've selected these and we'll go to our brushes here. Now you should be seeing roughly the same as what this is, but generally speaking, if you go, if we pull that out so you can see it, if you go open brush library, there should be quite a number of different options. Now it's kind of a case of just exploring these different options. Some of the lines are absolute rubbish, but, uh, but yeah, generally some of them should look pretty cool and be able to give you some, uh, some pretty cool different, um, different ways to approach your lines. So what we've got here is we've got artistic paintbrush. So I'm just clicking on that. And what that's done is it just, it's given me these slightly different, uh, slightly different line approach. So that you could say that you've experimented with uh, with different lines by uh, by using slightly different stroke patterns. Now, one of the things that's done is it's made the line a little bit thin and indistinct. So well, we could use that one, and what we can do is we can fatten that up just a little bit. Let's say 1.5. Now, all of a sudden, we're starting to get this slightly uh, more grungy approach. And what we can do there is I've just added a line to the black elements as well, which is given it, uh, given it this sort of grungy edge. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is we've created that sort of grungy line effect and you would certainly discuss that in your annotations that you've explored a, uh, a more grungy edge and a bit more of a distressed sort of look. Um, and in your annotations, you may wanna talk about how that may um, appeal to the particular audience you're looking to target, depending of course on what your audience is. Um, but uh, a couple of other things you can do if you wanted to explore line, just that little bit more, is let's zoom in a little bit. Now there's also in, and this is a, a pretty quick thing you can do, in Illustrator you can change it to a dash to line as well. So if we sort of zoom in here it turns it into a uh, slight sort of dash behind the line. So you're just breaking up these lines just that little bit. Let's make it five and one, maybe five or two. So what these are doing is it's just telling you how long the gap is versus how big the, the, the dash is. So, and then I'm just gonna eyedropper tool that again. So these are just all little things that you can do with the line just to mix it up a little bit. There's also, if we go back, Again, we can also change the line profile as well. So let's, so what that does is it sort of gives it that thin edge and it gets thicker, 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 and then thinner. And so these are just little things that you can do. Let's do it with the cheese as well. Can we do it with the cheese? Yeah. Let's have a look. Okay. So let's, let's change that profile there. So it's not letting me do it with the, with the tomato or the onion, which is, which is interesting. So if it doesn't let you do that, it's probably because it thinks that it's uh, a solid shape. So if we remove one of the lines and then go into the pen tool and then rejoin that line, 
you can then change the profile. So that's a little bit of a niggle. I'd actually probably say that's a bug with Illustrator that it doesn't let you do that. So you just delete that, delete that line there. And then all of a sudden your profile appears and then you can just reconnect that using the pen tool and you're then in a position to, to modify the profile. So these are sort of things, and again, in the annotations, you would talk about sort of a, an uneven line or a gradual, gradually fading line. And then you could start talking about how you might be able to use that to create a point of difference in your artwork. Okay, so generally what you, what you wind up with after doing this experiment is you get this ability to produce lots and lots of different variations and explore lots of design elements quite quickly uh, using, using those Illustrator tools. So what I'd recommend you do is, of course, with each of the elements you produce, you're going to want to talk about, uh, start putting in some annotations to say, oh, this is the original design, this is what I was working with, and then really highlight the particular design element that you're targeting within these designs, and also run a highlighter over um, the actual design element within your annotation as well, just so when people are assessing it, they can quickly look over and immediately know what you're trying to talk about within the annotation without having to read the entire passage. So you can go through with things like color schemes, you can always just include little swatches of the colors that you, that you used within this particular color scheme, particularly if you're talking about it. As I said, always make sure you have nice big titles to say, with this design, I was trying to do a monocolor, a monogram color experiment and start talking about that and then go into detail about why I use those colors. Talking about color tone rendering, you can incorporate more swatches here. What you're trying to do with this uh, extrusion, uh, that also sort of links back to isometric, which is a, a key design element that, uh, that you will need to exhibit. Um, and then of course, yeah, keep, keep going through, talk about your, your type, your kerning, letting, make sure that you use all of the keywords that you're learning because you need to show that you have an understanding of not just the element itself, but all of the different parts that make up that element. Uh, if you've used any inspiration for your design, so with these sort of colors, as I mentioned before, you've got this 90s color scheme, try to get some visual references into your folio that you can discuss that you used this 90s neon color reference as a bit of inspiration to formulate this and whether it worked or whether it didn't, whether it addressed your audience demands or not. Uh, if you've got this three color palette, make sure to include those colors that you're referencing, what those colors, what the pros and cons were. Say for instance, why purple uh, veggie patties and purple tomatoes don't necessarily uh, induce appetite. You could sort of talk about those things. Uh, and then again, with the shapes, you could make sure you use the words geometric shapes. If you're doing something angular, that's no longer an organic shape, talk about that you've used that. And also things like incorporating point as well. Make sure you talk about that and how it's affected your design for better or worse. Make sure you use those design element keywords. Now, this is what I landed with. So this was what I would say is the chosen treatment. I would basically say that this is what I'm going to continue to refine. Uh, so I've pulled in that geometric shape, I've pulled in a handful of tones, I've changed some of the colours, so in that I would talk about how the purple didn't quite work, uh, so I'd say how I felt as though that olive green sort of style might have been more conducive to a vegetarian and health orientated business. So you just sort of talk about those things and what you wind up with really quite quickly is a nice big series of uh, design explorations that you can really talk about and annotate and cover the entire gamut of your design elements.